Hello, welcome back to Software Dude. In system design, choosing the right type of storage is critical for ensuring that applications meet their performance, reliability, and cost requirements. Right? Storage is obviously one of the most important factors of any kind of system because you essentially end up storing data or documents or uh, videos or any other files or assets right so storage either directly or indirectly is almost part of every application that you build right so choosing the right type of sto uh, storage is very very important decision in terms of uh, designing a, a system a large scale distributed system right the two primary types of storage are ephemeral storage and persistent storage right so in this video we are going to explore the trade offs between these storage types we are going to consider aspects such as performance cost durability and look at some of the use cases where these these uh, storage types are primarily applicable right so let's start ephemeral storage so ephemeral storage primarily refers to a temporary storage right that is typically tied to the life cycle of an instance or a process right or, or, or a task right so it is primarily designed to store data that is tan, uh, transient in nature right which is not long lived uh, and it can be discarded after uh, an instance or after the process terminates right so temporary data processing for example etl jobs or like some task or some kind of uh, schedules right are like temporary kind of uh, operations and if that requires some kind of storage to run that operation that we would be referring to as uh, ephemeral storage right so some of the use cases where it is where ephemeral storage is used is in in memory databases for for example in session management right for for local in terms of compute intensive tasks you will need some kind of a scratch space right so those kind of use cases are applicable where you might want to use ephemeral storage now let's look at persistent storage right persistent storage refers to a long lasting storage right right that basically remains intact and retains the data right uh, even after the instance or process is terminated so it's not per process or per instance or per task uh, storage right it's more long lived right it's more long lasting right it is designed for storing data that is that must be served and available across uh, system restarts right or across failures so that is like permanent storage uh, which is called persistent storage right so let's look at some of the use cases persistent storage is used for relational and no sql databases right because of high durability high availability needs of those kind of applications so uh, persistent storage is needed there it is used in object storage uh, for unstructured data for example aws s3 right amazon s3 uh, and it is also used in distributed file systems like uh, hdfs and other file systems like wherever there is a need for a persistence or more long lived data storage which can operate across system failures that is where we use persistent storage right now let's take a look at the trade offs uh, between ephemeral storage and persistent storage start with let's let's look at performance okay performance for ephemeral storage is high with lower latency right it is often faster due to uh, locality for example they use uh, solid state drives uh, and which are much more faster in terms of data uh, data transfer right it has lower latency because the data does not need to travel over the network right but mm, uh, it is it is uh, like limited by the uh, physical hardware of the instance um, and it can also have data loss on on instance termination or failure remember it is per task per process does not persist the data across system failures or across system you know, termination so which is why it is it has high performance it has low latency but it might incur some kind of data loss if there is an instance failure process failure or it is also dependent on the physical hardware right but for persistent storage it the date it is highly durable and highly available it can be scaled independently right independent of the compute resources uh, whatever is the compute resource the, the storage is primarily separate from that and that can be scaled independently right uh, but because of that it can incur higher latency because it has network access and it has multiple hops to get the data right uh, which 
potentially can be a performance blocker due to the shared resources right in a in a network attached storage system uh, due to shared resources there can be potential performance bottlenecks right next the data life cycle right data life cycle like we discussed ephemeral storage is more uh, from a short lived perspective it is for transient data right and persistent uh, storage is more for long lived critical data right uh, persistent data itself can also be broken into hot storage cold storage like for example archival use cases you might want to have which are like stored for years right there might be audit trailing there might be compliance use cases where you legally are bound to store data for 10 years or 15 years right which is where persistent storage comes into the picture but also if there is data which is like application data right the user data or like data that is needed for a system to uh, to operate that can be customer data or system metadata but whatever it is it has to stay over a period of time right so that is where the data life cycle in terms of persistent storage is long lived and which is critical data for your application to run right next let's look at the cost ephemeral storage is typically included in the cost of the instance right so there is no additional charge uh, additional charges for the storage itself right but there can be cost associated with data loss like because there is a potential for data loss uh, so which is why there can if there is a data loss there can be associated costs because of data recovery point in time recovery and backup solutions right and since it is already included within the cost of the instance you know, that is basically limited by the instance size and type of the instance right so um, depending on the on the machine or the server that you are using uh, whatever that size is the ephemeral storage is probably a percentage of that size so that is dependent on the overall uh, instance size and type but for persistent storage it is cost effective for, for long term storage needs right so if you are having to store data over like 10 years 15 years for your application to run for example facebook is storing user data for like 15 20 years now right so so those are like more persistent storage and over a period of time that can incur uh, like per data cost basis it can be lower right uh, we can also use depending on what solutions you use if you use cloud solutions then there are tiered storage options to optimize the cost like uh, standard uh, for s3 and uh, s3 glacier which are like two different cost tire uh, tires depending on your usage right uh, however for persistent storage there can be additional cost for the storage capacity and the data transfer right so uh, it can have some higher cost for high performance persistent storage options remember uh, for performance is higher for ephemeral storage with low latency but because of more permanent storage options and because they are network hops the performance is a bit lower there uh, for pers uh, for persistent storage which is where if you want to have a higher performance persistent storage option then you might have to pay more right so it can incur some higher cost and next let's look at the durability and uh, reliability right so for ephemeral storage is uh, like we discussed it is for for temporary data right for caching or like say like transient like compute tasks right uh, but it does not have any built-in durability so which is not exactly uh, uh, it's it's a con right so data is lost on like instance termination or failure so in terms of durability uh, that is high risk because data can you can have data loss um, because it is dependent on the instance which is running right or the process that is running uh, which is where you might require external backup solutions or recovery solutions for data preservations which is which is now you are going into a territory of more permanency you know, which is like more into the persistent uh, storage option right and for persistent storage because it is stored over a period of time durability is one of the most critical options uh, so it is highly durable uh, with both redundancy backup options right uh, data replication and failover uh, capabilities which which basically can ensure reliability right uh, but having said that it is um, uh, persistent storage is more complex in terms of management and configuration 
for for data redundancy right I mean, and if your data is striped and if it is distributed right then how do you uh, implement redundancy most if you are using most of the uh, direct off the shelf solutions or cloud solutions they will provide this out of the box right but in in certain cases if you have to build this or if you have to design a system which can offer this uh, this can be a bit complex in terms of not only like designing it, it is definitely complex but also if you are getting it off the shelf you might have to manage it you might have to operate it right and you have to configure it so there can be a bit complexity involved there uh, and it is also potentially higher cost for high durability solutions right for uh, amazon s3 it's like i think 10 or 11 9 uh, durability and i i also have a aws s3 uh, video uh, which i link in the description below now you should look at that because how durability operates that's like a state of the art uh, system that in terms of storage and in terms of durability of data that is that is like the de facto standard so how how do you do that right so uh, so that's a con so overall these are the trade offs between ephemeral storage and persistent storage so choosing between ephemeral and persistent storage uh, often boils down to it depends on the specific requirements of the application right which includes uh, like performance cost durability data life cycle needs right uh, durability remember is one of the most important factors cost if you like over a period of time if it is more permanent data option then that reduces so by understanding these trade offs uh, and their appropriate uh, use cases for each storage type right uh, the the system can be architected uh, to be more design efficient right to be more reliable to be more cost effective right so hopefully this was useful thanks for watching